All right, so welcome. I'm gonna demo what we venture game we've got going on today. Let me find it. So share my screen. So I was inspired by um, a game called Shapes and Beats, where you have to mm -hmm. kind of avoid these targets and then get to these goals before time runs out. If time runs out, you lose. If you hit a red line, you lose a life. And so this is kind of the adventure game I'm going to demo today. And this is a game that Toad and Mario are going to face off and try to get a higher score. And you can see as this time goes on, sweet. we increase our score. Goodness, yeah. Uh, this is quite the game you've made, Tyler. But I I got this, definitely. <laughs> I've yeah. touched the computer before, probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> looks Looks pretty good, those lines going across, up and down, you know. Ever since Mario 1, 2, and 3, I've, I've been all about that. <laughs> there are different Marios? Yeah. I oh, evolved. That's, isn't that Pokemon? <laughs> they stem We're across the universes it. now. OK. <laughs> so I, whenever I create a game, I like kind of make a list of all the things that I need to do first. And it kind of helps me like break down um, all the steps I need to follow. So uh, I know I need to create a sprite. Um, I need to create some lines. I don't know, Daisy or Toad, Mara, if you have anything that you think. Um, I mean, you need to have like some type of opponent, right? And yeah. you also need to add lives because if you have the enemies, you have to lose lives, right? Yep. Oh yeah, so we need a life system. Um, we need a score system. Yeah, we need to make our, um, like our laser lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything? Oh, we need a timer, too. That makes sense. Um, yeah. We need to do things like when our sprites overlap and whatnot, mm. um, and how we're going to handle all that stuff. Is that everything? Could we be missing anything? Huh. Hmm. I don't know. Do you have to program in? I noticed that when the line hits the little character, that a bits of white come off of it. Do you have to program so then, in? Yeah. So yeah, I think that would be handled like in our sprite overlap stuff. Okay. So I mean, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that we're gonna do. So that is a good observation. Though. Okay. Does it have more than? Does it have more than one level or more than one speed? Yeah. So that's a surprise for you. So no oh, spoilers. So. But I think we're gonna try to include that. So let's let's jump into it. First thing I'm gonna do. Um, is create my character. So I'm going to go to sprites and I'm just going to do go here. And like in shapes and beats, it's just a square. And I kind of like that simple design because admittedly, I am not very good at doing kind of graphic design kind of stuff. Um, so I like just making um, basic square. Very nice. Um, Avant garde, even. Uh -huh. Oops. Race tool. Why a square and not like a triangle? Triangles are kind of hard to do in 8-bit stuff. That's Symmetry. A little, that's a little bit bigger than I wanted, but so huh. get rid of. Ah. Oh, for a moment, it looked like you're making Pac-Man there. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Good enough. Ooh. Okay. So we got our square. Um, and we also, the other sprite we need to do is, um, ooh, movement too. That was something we oh. had here. So, all right, so movement. So I'm going to go into controller. I'm gonna say move my sprite with buttons and that will give me this. Hmm. Okay. And you notice I go I'm off the screen. So I want my sprite to stay on the screen. So I'm gonna go down to do, 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 do. Stay on screen. Perfect. Okay. No, I can't go off screen. And then the other thing we need to do, I need to create that little blue thing, that blue square that my sprite is going to touch. Hmm. Oh, I also need a fun name for my sprite. Any ideas? Uh, block. Go block. Pointy. Blocky. Oh, blocky. Oh, blocky. 
Okay. Like that rhymes with Rocky. All right. So I'm gonna make another sprite. I like that blue color, and then I'm going to. Doo -doo -doo. I want to make this one much bigger. And are the blue blocks basically something that you go and touch before the red blocks, before yes, the red line? Exactly. Do? So that makes sense. You should make it so big. Okay. Yeah. Toad gets it. Yeah. Although I'm partial to a star, you know, if Blocky could touch a star and then he could, you know, throw some payback to the to the red lines, that would be cool too. But you know, for version two of the game. <laughs> You know, you know. Okay. So there's that little block. Um, and then now I'm going to, I want to move this to a starting position over here. So I'm going to go to set my sprite position. I'm going to rename this one. Um, Glacier. What's up? Glacier. Glacier. Okay. Yeah. It's big. It's a glacier. Yes. Um, and I'm just going to do 25, 25. Oh, what is the X and Y? Does one mean length or one means height? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. So X and Y, so it's like a coordinate system. We often use that in game design. Mm -hmm. So X is going to be left and right, and then Y is going to be up and down. And then ah, we'll start goes this way, and Y goes this point way. Zero, zero, and you can see this in here. If I go up to this top corner, it's like zero, zero. And I go down here, um, it is, I think the very bottom corner is one, 160, 120. It's like so a, any coordinates we're putting in are between those two extreme points. Yeah. All so the um, to, yeah. So any point on here, every single point on the screen is controlled by X and Y. Great so for, every, for everyone at home, if you all want to play around with that so you can get comfortable with using the X and Y to put in coordinates, it looks like it would be pretty fun to do. Just maybe put it there, drag it over here. Not bad. So when I, in my sample game, when I touched that sprite, it disappeared. So I'm going to do that now. And we handle that in um, overlaps under mm -hmm. sprites. So we're going to say when my sprite touches glacier um so right now it's of kind player and of kind player i'm going to change glacier to a different type of kind i can create your own kind um i'm going to create a new kind i'm going to call it um i'm going to call it recharge since it recharges our time but you can call it whatever you want doesn't matter and Bam. then so when i touch when my sprite of kind player, which is what Blocky is, of kind player, hits another lapse, another sprite of kind recharge, it's going to do a certain set of actions. So, um, and I want this sprite to disappear. So I'm just going to destroy it. Oh no. Sorry, Glacier. It's global warming. Oh. See, same. And there it's gone. Whoa. It's gone. Wow. So now I want this to respawn. And if you noticed, I had it respawning in four different corners. So it was random which corner it went to, but I don't want it to be random just on a screen because that means it can like, you know, spawn right next to it. It could spawn in really weird places. I kind of want to do a random control, but I also want to control it in four different spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to, I'm going to create four different positions and I'm gonna assign them kind of like a value and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it pick a random one. So for this, I'm going to create a variable to keep track of where these things are going to go. Hmm. So I'm going to call this, um, call this variable current position. I'm just gonna abbreviate it POS. You'll see that a lot in gaming, POS for position. Good to know. So I'm going to say set current position. I'm going to, it's always good to kind of initialize your, your variables when you start your code. So I'm going to add that to top of my game. And I'm going to say set current position. I'm going to go to math to pick a random one. And I'm going to have four different positions. I'm going to say pick random from one to four. Hmm. 
So it has an equal chance of picking any of these four positions. Oh, so it doesn't always stay the same. It will just be random and variable for each game? Um, well, it'll be, yeah, like the order that the, this blue block or mm -hmm. glacier populates, or not populates, that sounds the right word, um, you know, changes position, changes mm -hmm. go on screen, it'll be completely random every time. That'll bring some spice to the game. Very interesting. Did you, when you first designed it, did you did you think about having it randomly appear anywhere on the screen? I know I you said it, it could go to blocky, but did it change the experience of playing it? It did. It, sometimes it made it really easy because it would just like position, it would just like randomly appear right next to where it was. And I wanted it to be a little bit harder where you have to travel across the screen to get to it. So I didn't like that. Um, so I'm doing random, and I'm going to tell it to pick a different position. So I'm using the if statement. So it's going to test if something is true. And we're going to use logic. I'm going to say equal. Right click and just move it a little quickly so we can kind of get through this. Um, and I'm going to say if current position equals one. Oops. You know what? I should have duplicated this after I did that. Pro tip. It's comforting that you can make a mistake and go back and fix it so quickly. And then three and then four. And I've already got my first position done. And then I'm also going to set my current position. I'm going to set it to one. So that's where I'm at. So I'm going to duplicate this and then I'm going to move it over here. So I'm going to keep X this, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep Y the same and I'm going to change this to um, 135. Oops. So right now you're designating the four different places that the glacier will pop, not populate exactly. up here. Got it. Okay. I'm glad I asked about the X and Y before. That's important here. It is very important. Um, this one, I'm going to keep X the same. So I'm going to keep X, oops, I'm going to keep X at, change that to 25, and I'm going to make this one um, 95. This. Oops. And then I'm going to say opposite. So I'm going to use my numbers that I've used so far. So I'm going to use 135 and 95, and that will take me to the bottom corner. I'm going to change that to four. So now my sprite should. Oh, you know what? After we destroy something, we should always create it. So, oops. Let's go up here. Oops. So get another copy of Glacier. Boom. Ah, there we go. And what did you do to make that one? It was after you destroy, create another? Yeah, I'm just recreating you know, Glacier kind recharge after I destroy it. And then I'm telling it to pick a different position and then go to that position. One, that's so cool. Okay. So as you can see, there it goes. It okay. works. So we got that set up. Um, now we need to add our obstacles. So I'm going to create another Right. Um, I'm going to call this one laser. I think I've already got this variable created, but I'm going to go here, grab another sprite. Actually, I'm not going to do it here. Um, I'm going to create a forever loop. So we want these sprites, you know, our lasers or obstacles to be constantly going across. How do you so, decide when to make another grouping of um, commands? What's up? 
how do you decide when to make another grouping of commands? I know we have- Well, I think, as you saw when we created a sprite, it auto-populates like on start right at the beginning. Sure. And, like what we want, and so we don't really want like a sprite just like this. What we want is a projectile. We want these sprites to be, you know, our lasers to be coming from the side, kind of like what they call a projectile. And so it's a different concept. So you give it a different group. Yeah. So, Got it. Um, and we want a projectile coming from the side because all the lasers are going to come from the side. And for this one, like I said, I'm going to call this laser. And then um, I'm going to create a laser. So you can see in the bottom left here corner, we can change this to a different size. So I'm making this 160. Um, if you remember X, the length of the screen is, oops, not 40. I'm just gonna make this four. Is the length of our screen is 160 pixels and that's what it is and it's four pixels tall. So this laser will scratch across the screen from left to right. And then you'll see this, this is going crazy. What we need to do- oh, wow. There's your triangle, Mario. Yeah, it's making yeah. a laser from here, from the side, like crazy. And what we need to do to fix this craziness is to put a, put a little bit of delay in there. We're going to tell it to pause a little bit. And you can see these. Now you can start seeing these individual. I don't want to play this game. So. Wow, it's, it's like a, it's a stare. I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you. And then, as we said, our BX and our BY right here is controlling our speed and like a little bit of our direction too. So if I make this zero, now our laser just goes across this oh, Much better. From left to right. But I want to make it in the middle of the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Y. And I'm going to set this to, let's just for an example, I'm going to set it to 45. And you'll see this now coming out across the screen. So now we're getting closer to what we want it to be. Nice. I know the laser, it's going across, but it takes some time to travel. And that's why you're not seeing I was going to say either that's pretty slow or it's pretty long. So now it's spawning this across the screen. Wow. Like that. Um, another thing I want to do is just in case we want to change our speed at any point, I'm going to add a variable called speed. And I believe I've already got it. I already have a speed variable made. So I'm not going to create another one. And I'm going to go up here to my top, go down to speed, and I'm just going to say 50. So if we ever want to increase the speed in our game or make it a little bit harder, we can just edit it in one spot rather than having to go through all of our different lasers and changing it manually. I like that. So yeah, we can use our speed um, speed variable to control that. The other thing is too, I want this left and right laser up here to appear at a random location. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to math and I'm going to pick our random thing again. And in Y, it starts at zero up here. And it's going to go to 10. So I'm going to do this for the top half of the screen. And I'm going to make it come down a little bit. I'm going to do like 10 to 60. And now when we see it come across, it will be at different locations. But this is not hard enough. So what we're going to do is hard we're going to add another one. But I want this one to come from the other side of the screen. And I'm going to add a little bit of a delay here as well. Um, I'm going to do 750 milliseconds, which is 3 quarters of a second milliseconds. There's 1,000 milliseconds in one second. It's a little bit shorter. It's going to add a little bit of a delay. And then um, I'm also going to tell it to pick random here. But this one, I want to be in the lower half of the screen. So I'm going to say 50. So there's a little bit of overlap to like 110. Now we got different things. Oop, let's put that pause. Let's put that delay back in there. And then I want this one to come from the opposite side of the screen. 
And to do that, instead of giving it a positive number, we need a negative number. And I can do that by doing a little bit of math just to turn that into a negative number. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we got positive right, negative left. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now let's get some ones coming from the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add two more. This one, but I'm going to change the way these guys look. Um, if you remember, the screen is 120 pixels tall, so we don't need to do 160. Anymore four for this one. I'm also going to make these ones red. Oops. Let's add another. Let's add a little bit of delay in there between each one. And then I'm going to also add this in here as well. But I'm going to change this to X mm. rather than Y. And I'm going to move my speed over here to, to make them go up and down. And now you should see these up and down things. Oops. We also need to turn this off. Turn these to zero so they just go up and down. Although I thought that was pretty cool, the way it went up and to the right. That oh. would definitely add a level of difficulty. Oh, just you wait. Oh. I don't want to spoil it for you. Oh, dear. Um, so let's do the same thing. Let's split this in half. So I'm going to say, um, let's say 10 to, since it's a little bit different, um, 10 to 50, and I'll say 50 to 110 again. Let's see, what, let's see what this gives us. And since this is X, X is a little bit bigger. So we can probably do 10 to 80. And let's do, so we can add a little bit of overlap, 10 to 150, or 7150 for our bottom one. And this will spread these out across the screen a little bit more. Okay. Let's That's make it spawn a little bit faster to make this game a little bit harder. Okay, this is shaping up. Um, one thing you notice how the red line goes over the blue. I'm gonna, I want the blue to kind of appear over top. So I'm gonna go to Glacier. And I'm going to change Z depth, and I'm going to change this to, let's just say one. And I think that will, yep, see now the red line is now going behind. So Z what controls, was it that you had to change that to? Z depth? Yeah. So Z controls um, what appears on top of other things on the screen, since it's a 2D screen. So it's the third dimension, X, Y, and then depth going. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's add a timer um, and some overlap stuff, what happens when our sprite touches a projectile. So um, so I'm going to go back here, just how we did this with the kind of recharge. Let's add it down here, add all of our overlaps in one spot. I'm going to do projectile, and then I'm going to say what happens when my, this sprite touches a red line. And I want it to lose a life. Before we do that, we need to add lives. So I'm going to go to info. I'm going to set life to three. Am I on start code? And I'm going to go to info, and I'm going to say change life by negative one, which will remove a life for us. And now I have a question. if I hit a red line, I lose, I just lose the game automatically. That's because my sprite is in constant contact and it's happening so fast, it's losing every single life right away. So we need to figure out a way to fix that. I'm sorry, somebody had a question? I had a question. How, how do you determine 
which container goes where. I, I noticed that the forever container is to the right, but when you added this other container, you went to the bottom. So does it matter about placement of the containers? It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. I like to keep things similarly related close to each other. And that way, I so I know all my overlap stuff is here. It doesn't really matter where it's at, but it's a good idea to kind of keep your code clean a little bit. So that way you're not hunting for everything and it's organized, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. You know, for the, con for the purposes of the game, just for us. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to fix this, I normally you can just delete the, the sprite you touch, like this red line, but I don't wanna delete it so I'm gonna make my sprite invulnerable for a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to sprites. I'm gonna do set my sprite autos to auto destroy. I'm gonna change this to blocky. I'm gonna change auto destroy to ghost. When ghost does, it makes your sprite so it, it doesn't take it away, but it makes it so it doesn't interact with other sprites. So I turned to ghost, I took away a life, but I'm still, but I'm still in ghost mode. So mm -hmm. I need to change back. So I'm gonna pause the, I'm gonna delay it for a second. I'm gonna give um, the player one second of invulnerability. Um, and then I'm going to turn ghost off. Mm -hmm. So now I lo lose a life, but I can stay in there until for one second and then I go back. So now we've got our life system created. I think the other thing we need to do is timer. So we want our game to um, count down until we get a block. And how we can do that is in scene, or I'm sorry, under info, we can do start countdown timer. I'm going to start it for six seconds. But we need a way to, once the sprite touches, we need a way to reset our timer. So what we're going to do is, can go back to info and we say, when our sprite touches Glacier, I'm going to stop the countdown. And then I'm going to restart restart it and reset the clock to six seconds. So you have six seconds between every time you touch Glacier. Oh, that definitely adds the pressure. Oh yeah. Goodness. Yeah, navigate all these lines. Ooh, that was close. Okay. Hmm. I think the last thing we need to do is just add score. So we want the score just to increase as time goes on. So I'm just going to create another forever loop. Um, you could also probably use on game update. I'll use that one just for some variety. On game update is pretty similar to forever. It's just like every time the game updates, which is updating very quickly, um, I want to change the score by one. Hmm. You'll see our score is going very fast. So I I'm like finished. adding a little bit of a delay or pause in there, just 100 milliseconds and that will slow the score down. Still fast, but it changes it pretty quickly. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Future Tyler. In the video, I just told you that you could use this on-game update with a pause block. Turns out that is a giant mistake. As you can kind of tell from the game, it is being really laggy in the slowdown, and it's being caused by this. So what I'm going to recommend you do is take on-game update every 500 milliseconds, change this to 100 milliseconds, throw away that pause block, grab change score by one, and then put and then delete on the game update. And then when we refresh, it is much, much smoother. So it's a little simple error. Let's use this instead of the on game update and let's get back to the regular recording. And then we'll start seeing our high score, which is what we'll use to figure out if Toad or Mario is the better gamer. Oh, goodness. Very nice. Getting some land. I'm glad this is being recorded because it's it's pretty fast. But also, those are like all really good points I need to remember. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just, I know it's going a little fast there, but I just oh, wanted to. We have a time limit. Um, 
make sure we got everything today before we ran out of time. Okay, so that's just a basic adventure game that I made, um, just about how you can interact with some other sprites and avoid other obstacles and how you can make them come through. And so, that guy's one last thing I want to show you. This is a lot of this is a lot of code right here. And if we wanted to add either more obstacles, or more laser beams, or even different patterns, I think Mario was talking about how it was cool. Some were coming across diagonally as a cool effect. Um, it, this forever block would get really long very quickly. So under advanced, this is a way you can kind of um, create your own blocks. And it's basically something called functions. I've already created some, but I'm gonna create a new one. I'm just gonna rename it um, pattern one. And what I can do with pattern one is I can put all this code in here. Oh, wow. And then um, if I go back to functions, I will see I have a call pattern one. I'm gonna add this pause thing back here. So it calls pattern one. And you can see it's calling all this code. So I've put all my code into this one. And now it's basically, it says call this and it does all, all the code here, which is basically kind of how the block works and you can shorten it up. Um, and the reason you saw a bunch of other patterns is because I made a bunch of other patterns. Uh -huh. to make this game a little bit more difficult. Oh my goodness. Mario and Toad. So That's I'm gonna good. add these back in here and then let's see them, let's see them game. Okay. So. I don't remember what all these patterns do. So we're gonna Jeez find Louise. Out. You don't know what they do, but you're gonna make us find out. Yep. Um, and let's pause, let's get a pause between each one. I think, I think three seconds between each pattern is good. Okay, so let's find out what they do. All done, one more. All right, I'm gonna share my, my publisher project. I'm gonna share it in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna send it to Mario and Tom, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay. All right, so who's up first? Oh, golly. You want to rock, paper, scissors for it, Mario? Hmm. Let's see. All right. Okay, Tyler. So you put it in a chat. Oh, I guess that's a no. <laughs> well, I need to get to the game first. So you put it in a chat, and I need to click a link or something. Open up that link. I'm going to open it up. All right. Yeah. Mario, your uh, video is off. Oh. Huh? Your video is off, Mario. Sorry. Just one orange eye. Oh, oh I guess. Oh. oh yeah, I just I just beat this game nine times. I don't know what <laughs> to tell you. All right. So do you have it? I do have it. Uh and I'm crushing it. I'm doing a great job. So All I right. guess I'll just share my screen in a moment. All right. You want to share your screen? Yes, here. Let me. Tyler, you sent the link to hosts. Yeah, yeah, I'll share it with the other group okay. once, once we get through this. So okay. I will share it out to everyone in just a second. It says I can't share a screen. Would you mind? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I apologize. No worries. Okay, all right, try now. Ah, yep, here we go. Okay, do, do. Can everyone uh, see? Yep. Cool. Here we go. How many rounds should I go? Well, I think just till you, till you die. We'll see what oh, kind of score you get. It's like that. Yes. Toad supremacy. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so close. This is heart pounding. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Only one life only left. One life to live. Ah. 
All right, 328, Mario. Okay. You can beat that. Okay, let's see. All right. Whew, my pulse is pounding. My toad heart. Uh, Reese, to answer your question, I, I did all the code for this game. So Mario and Toad have never seen this until now. That was my very first time. I know. Too. Toad didn't even make it through all the different patterns either. <laughs> Wait, more than... <laughs> okay. More. Oh, dear. Dolly. You have not seen the final form yet. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep winning while we uh No Toad, I'm gonna say, you know, I'm kind of better with uh, you know, remote controls, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, is that Mario Island? <laughs> no. Let's see. All right. I just got the highest score. I think I just broke the game. I see my screen. You we see your desktop. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Give me one moment. In the meantime, I am playing the game again, and I think I got to the second pattern, Tyler. Oh, well, you There's know six. what? It's a <laughs> relevant <laughs> patterns. What'd you say? There, there. I think there are six different patterns. Oh, God. Well, I guess there's nothing to brag about getting to the second one, huh? All right. Okay. All right. We can see what's for you now. Okay. Show okay. us what you got, Mario. All right. 328 is the score to beat. Okay. Oh, you guys are on. Let's see. Get that refresh in the top right. Or push A. I'm sorry. Push A, and then you'll be going. Gotcha. I need to days. move you guys out of. All right. Here we go. Ah. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, I, I think I think something funny is going on here. All right, let's. I agree. There's something. <laughs> let's see. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Nope, you gotta get all out that right. red line. All right. <laughs> I think you made it easier for Toad. Toad. I think you were taking it easier on Toad. I think that's what was going on. All right, let's see. Toad wins. All yeah. right, Mario. You know you need to avoid the red lines, right? Oh, did you think uh, that they gave you mushroom powers? I understand that. Game over. Know, I'm used to jumping on the platforms. You oh, know. yeah, that's no, no, it. you got to avoid it. these that's platforms. It. I understand, that's Mario. It. Touch, yeah, there you go. When you've been All on right. top for so long, you know, you just don't know how to do it Toad style. You got to go under. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I think know. we can safely say Toad is the winner. I think we can. But, you know, if Mario wants to sharpen this up and come back another time, I believe you. Sorry, Mario. No. It's okay. It's okay. Practice makes perfect. I got you, Toad. I got you. You know, I don't like picking on the little guy, so I let you win. Oh, no. I it's okay, Mario. You know, it's I'm still okay. the winner. I, I still do win. it to Luigi all the time. I, I, let him, I let him win. You know, so he feels good. Oh. I, I know who's better. I think I understand who the better brother is now. Me and Luigi should hang out. He seems pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just remember, the M is for master. The M know. is for Mario. Mario, your name. <laughs> All right. I added the link to the game if anybody else wants to play along and see if they can beat Toad's record of 328. Granted, that was the first try for Toad. I feel a Toad if they probably do a little more practice. Exactly. You know, I already crushed it 328 times per millisecond while playing. It can only get better from here. Only yeah. get better. Okay, so I want to thank you all for coming. We're running a little late, but just um, a couple more things. Oops. Um, announcements. And so we will also put the code in for the attendance for today. So I want to thank you all for coming. Make sure you all get credit for that. Um, here is the attendance leak. Link once again. And then uh, today's code word is toad. Toad the yes. winner. Toad. I am the code word. Um, put that link in there. And I also want to make an announcement that uh, we'll be back next week. So we have another live stream. Um, uh, oops. Mm -hmm. 
We have another live stream coming up next week. We're going to do a tart. We're going to do a target gallery game. I think because it's so close to Halloween, we will be kind of be kind of spooky Halloween themed again mm -hmm. Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, and we'll be doing live streams every day. Oops, it, doesn't, it shouldn't say November 30th. It should say November 20th. It is a typo for boss battle. I will fix that. Of course, too long. Um, the link for the attendance code is codeofchallenge.org slash attendance. Code word toad the winner. Toad. Toad. I think it's just beginner's luck, you know? <laughs> it, the, the code should be beginner's luck, you know? The code should be toad because toad rocks. Or the, or the code should be Mario was gracious. All right, everyone, thank you for coming. We will see you coming. next week. If you have any questions, you can stick around, add it to the chats or anything. But if you're free to go, I will um, I will definitely post a code um, to the game on our website. But I will also just add it to the chat right now. Uh, let, me, let me get it. What a fun game. I like it. We enjoyed that. I know a lot of code very really quickly, but you know, just want to get all that stuff in. Link to the game is in the chat. Oops. All right, so Jaden, for we're, we're going to be doing a platformer um, tutorial in a little bit. I think also on the next half day, I think uh, it hasn't been released yet, but we're going to be doing a special drop-in session where you, we are going to show you how to make platformers and stuff. So um, we also have tutorials on how to do a jump. If you go to um, the tutorials page on codeitchallenge.org, you can find the jump tutorial. It's very organized. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate you coming and learning coding and watching me win. Okay. I see you next week. Rematch. Best two out of three. Uh, yeah. I'm down. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye. Yeah. See you next week. Peace.